Hello and welcome to this very first video edition of our lecture Answer Set Solving in Practice. My name is Thorsten Schaub and I've been giving this lecture on the master level over the last decade or so at the University of Potsdam. Although we started to introduce Answer Set Programming into our bachelor course on computational intelligence uh, a few years ago and the students really seem to like it. And I really hope that you'll be having as much fun as they do and we do by playing or experimenting with Answer Set Programming. It comes without saying that everything I'll be talking about owes a lot to my great research group and the great, wonderful answer set programming community to which we owe most of the results and most of the ideas. I just talk about them. Okay, anyway, let's get started. This first part more or less sets the stage. I'll be talking about the roadmap, what's on the menu for you, about the resources, where can you get the information, the lit literature that nicely accompanies the course, and last but not least, the fun part, the systems that will do it. Okay, so I'll actually be trying to do very short videos so that people can just re-listen to certain parts. I hope that this doesn't introduce too many cuts, but let's wait. Okay, here's the first cut. So in section one or in the first part I start about motivating the whole thing why are we doing this what what is it good for etc and then in the second part give you those formal preliminaries that you'll need to start modeling and to experience to make your hands dirty that's more or less the idea normally in a master course I well I in, I go from section one to seven this is actually when people then will understand or when you will understand how really an ASP solver works and then I usually jump to section 12 where I take up modeling again and the rest more or less is either by demand or in the more practical courses uh, we, we will then tackle this okay this is more or less what's on the menu and this is the material I'll be developing over developing over the next few months also it may well be that for instance in the foundation section I'll be giving you alternative foundations like Vladimir Lifshitz wrote this very nice paper which keeps changing its title I think it's now at 12 alternative definitions of stable model semantics. So we'll be looking at different ones perhaps, but they will not be relevant necessarily to follow the rest, right? It's more or less, again, a menu for you. Okay, next we look at resources and do another cut. Well, as can be expected, the resources of this course can be found on the web. Well, this is somewhat different, of course, for those people following our master course at the University of Potsdam because there we have a Moodle page, but it's more or less the same material. Anyway, we created a new GitHub organization just well, a few weeks ago and we are now in two th October 2020 where I'll be putting and pushing all the uh, LaTeX sources of the slides and we'll also be putting the exercises at some point and the videos can be, can be obtained from there. This URL may still change at some point in the future and then I have to redress in the same way but anyway, that's, that's my problem then, right? Otherwise, what you will be seeing a lot is this URL, potasco.org, and this is actually the place where all our resources that we develop in Potsdam come together. Actually, Potasco stands for Potasco Answer Set Solving Collection. And there's also a teaching page, and this teaching page will also lead you to this material. Presumably, at least when you have not been following the, the, the course in Potsdam, you may watch this, or you have downloaded this video from our YouTube channel, which I haven't been using for a couple of years. I have some older videos there. Beware that these videos actually deal with older versions of Klingo, which have a slightly different modeling language. So just be aware of that. But so I'll be pushing all videos also to this channel and you can subscribe to it and stay tuned at that point. If you want to know what's happening in the community, notably in the, in the community around our systems, there's the Potasco users mailing list. You can subscribe to that. And it's pretty cool, not only because people post questions, get answers, but there's also an archive and you may actually find interesting, interesting issues by looking just at the archive, which type of threads were, were, were um, discussed. If you want to know when, if you want to stay up to date and know when systems are released, then subscribe to the Potasco's announce list and there we will be sending out announcements of, of new releases of our systems. You may of course wonder, well, why when, when since we are now actually uh, Git oriented and GitHub oriented, why we still have mailing lists at SourceForge? That's exactly the point. We were 
before we moved to, to GitHub actually on SourceForge, also a great place, but we wanted to quit SVN and go to Git, and that's why we decided to go to GitHub. But SourceForge has these nice mailing lists, and this is what we kept using, and we have been very reluctant to move our mailing lists to some, somewhere else. Okay, if you have comments, criticism, um, other things uh, uh, on the course, just send a message to, to, this, to this list here, which is read by me and some other people, right? Okay, these were the resources around the course. The next section will be dealing with the literature around this course. Okay, and here's again the famous cut. In fact, earlier versions of this course led to a book, and this is more or less the book that also mirrors the salient material of, of the course. So the chapters 1 to 8 are more or less what I was saying at the beginning, that, that if I run this as an usual master course, I go from... I go through section 1 to 7 and then to section 8 and meanwhile what, is, what has now been between 7 and 8 on the other slide has, has been added over the years. But this book comprises quite a comprehensive material on how to use ASP, how to model with it, uh, how the systems work and uh, once you know the systems, uh, how you may actually want to improve your modeling in certain ways. Again, this, the information is gathered on, on protasco.org. Uh, the book can be obtained from there, but keep in mind the book is normally, at least for students, uh, freely available at university libraries. The, the editor of this, Morgan Kaufmann, normally has flat tariffs with universities, so in Potsdam actually all the students can just, once they have an IP of the university, either directly or with VPN, they can just access the book and download it, and the same actually should work for most uh, CS departments in the world. Um, Again, the teaching material is also uh, summarized here, as I, as I already said before. Now, the book gives you an idea on the principles, the methodology, and so on and so forth, but if you really want to know certain things about the modeling language, uh, you should use it together with a guide. This guide is not perfect, because writing documentation is not always um, an easy task, because you still have to find another level. But we have a guide, and even though it's not complete for let's say, rather involved issues, it covers most of, of basic ASP and notably uh, things that have been described in the ASP uh, core standard, in the second one, actually. Good. What adds to it is that Vladimir Lifshitz has just uh, published a new book, actually in 2019 or 2020, I don't even remember, um, on answers at programming, which actually stems from his bachelor course on ASP, and he's using actually our systems, and hence this goes together very, very well. In a way, one could say that this Vladimir's book is a very nice introduction on the bachelor level, while we mainly address already master students, and so you could, having both of them together with a guide is, I think, what you need to have a perfect experience with this course, and this means actually fun. Okay. Literature as well, so this is actually a, a, a LaTeX document, so all these, all these pointers here can be looked up uh, at the back. So here now, this is on page 19, you can just click on that and then you get there. Are books, surveys, magazines, some articles I find, I find interesting, but there's a lot of literature about it. And there's also the guide. And notably, these entries are taken from our bibliography, which is also on GitHub. And actually, if you click on here, you see that this is actually in our groups. Uh, Git, but it's, it's, it's open, you can access it, and uh, if you want to correct it, just launch a, a pull request and you can add entries or we can correct things, right? So, just to let you know that I just picked some entries from the literature here, but they are all taken from a larger bibliography that we actually use for writing papers normally, and it's, you, you can just uh, download it, it's, it's, it's open and, and free, of course, so um, enjoy. Okay, last but not least, let's then come to the fun part and look at the systems after the stop. Although I'll be talking mainly about the ASP system Klingo developed uh, at our lab in Potsdam, I nonetheless would like to talk a little bit about the major systems used nowadays, right? And there's actually Klingo and DLD. So Klingo, as, as mentioned, is was originally designed and is still implemented and further developed at the University of Potsdam in, in my research group. DLV actually goes back actually almost 10 years, 10 years more. 
and was originally uh, designed at the second half of the 90s at the Vienna University of Technology and has meanwhile moved to the University of Calabria. At least the development has moved to the University of Calabria. So I just to, ex to explain the format, I first put here the system name, then uh, references on papers about these systems, and here on, on, the, on, on the right hand side, I put the uh, corresponding URLs that you can go there, look at the systems, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so the reason why I talk about ASP systems and about grounders and solvers is actually that ASP systems are composed of two components, which are the grounders, and grounders more or less they pass um, your input written in a modeling language with first order variables. These variables are systematically replaced and they result in a, a propositional uh, logic program, so a program without any variables. And then this propositional program is taken by a solver and this solver then computes the stable models of the, of the logic program. Okay, this was already some technical terms, but anyway, it's, it's a process that, that, that takes two passes. So, and Klingo, actually, you can see as basically com being composed of Gringo and uh, Clasp. So, Gringo is the grounder and Clasp is the solver. Similarly, actually, DLV has a, a grounder and the newest version of the grounder is IDLV and the newest version of DLV as a solver uses WASP. Historically, I also put LPARs and S models, which were actually the very first grounder and the very first uh, solver, both developed in the group of Ilka Niemela at the, uni at the University of Technology of Helsinki, which is now called Alto University. Okay, what I also added actually is, he, with this plus sign here, these, these are actually the first references on the system, and the second ones are, interestingly, this is on the really detailed semantics of the system, and this is the language standard. And there is now a new language standard, and Gringo as well as DLV or their grounders ad adhere to this language standard and even extend this in certain, certain ways. So for encoding, so let's model, model uh, solutions to certain problems. Uh, I would recommend you that you go to the Asparagus system. Unfortunately, Asparagus hasn't seen a makeover since a couple of years. But it's more or less a shopping center where you say, I want, this, I want a solution to this problem and I want instances of this and you shop and then you go to the cashier and just get a tarball or something like this. Another very rich source on examples on, on, on um, logic programs used for modeling in ASP are the competitions and there were so far five editions and all five of them are here. And actually, the I now here point to the literature, but for you, it may actually be more beneficial to go to the respective web pages and see what type of problems were solved there, look at the encodings and get a feeling for that. So anyway, I think for, your, for the course as such, uh, you need Klingo. And I would actually already, although you can see this on, 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 on Klingo's web page as well, the recommendation, highly recommend that you install it with Conda. So Conda is a package manager that you can... You can um, that you, first of all, you can install yourself the package manager and then also the, the, the systems without being super user, right? You can install this just in your home directory and it's platform independent. That's the, that's the beauty about it. So just install Conda or Anaconda or Miniconda, I guess, is another possibility, depending on your operating system. And then uh, uh, get, get the Klingo distribution and how this works is described on potasco.org, in particular the Klingo site at potasco.org. Well, and this uh, brings me to the end of the first part, of the organization part. So I say, auf Wiedersehen, and tomorrow isn't staying out. I'll be back, without a doubt, as said the Pink Panther. Okay, bye.